call the meeting to order. Um, it looks like there's some people here from the public for the uh, stormwater management fee um, or utility fee. Just give you a little brief description of what's going on so you're you're educated. And there's also flyers up on the podium. If you're going to speak or don't choose to speak, please come up and get one. It gives you the timeline and tells you who's responsible for this, not this body. Okay. The, and, and you conduct yourself in an orderly fashion or you'll be asked to leave. Um, first of all, this county council is the governing body that only from the, the state law that was changed by the legislators has the, we're the ones to task, being given the task to either approve, modify, or to, a, um, to deny any public utility rate. All right, so the Public Service Commission used to do that, but the largest counties in the state of West Virginia, they've given that pass to the county council, which is us. The second thing is, is that the MS4, this county was voluntarily put in, the entire county, by the commissioners that sat in the office back in uh, 2004, all right? That's Steve Teufel, Howard Strauss, and Ron Collins. As you know, none of us are those three. At the, the same time, where they also per, I told you they permitted the whole county. All right, not just the urbanized areas, but the whole county. The public storm water district that was created because the sewer district and the storm water cannot co-mingle funds and and that's actually from the Public Service Commission had to start a stormwater utility company they are in the process of renewing their permit and they have already asked the EPA to modify the permit to do the urbanized area only and that means any watershed any water that's shed it off the ground that falls into the urbanized area. The problem with what was approved by this council is that the permit is currently the entire county. So we have to follow the permit that's issued. We can't say, okay, we're going to ignore the permit as it stands today, and we're only going to turn around and do the urbanized area. That's not what the permit, per, the permit says. The permit says the entire county. The public storm water district has already told us, and I'm sure if you was there at their meeting, they probably told you the same thing. They are in the process of getting the permit, asking to get the permit modified. All right. So with that said, I'll open up the floor for public comments. You have three minutes to, 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 to say what you have to say. I ask for you not to repeat what, you, what the other person said. Um, and we listen to have you, what you have to say and go from there and state your name for the record when you come up from. Can, can, can I you can, a second? Sure. So, so um, one thing you didn't mention is that the, the part that we approved was to, to be able to change that once it does, if that permit comes back right. changed, we're going to, um, so we're going to make that change. <clears throat> what Council Vice President Delia said is, Part of the pro approval process that we did was that the storm sewer district understands if the permit is modified and their wishes is granted, then the fee structure will be for the urbanized watershed only. All right. So again, uh, open the floor for uh, item from the public. Yes, sir. State your name for the record. Roger Lewis. A uh, concerned Berkeley County citizen. You know, I was reading over the code and uh, it mentions getting 750 signatures or either 15 or 25 percent of the uh, citizens that are served by the public water sewer district. And so I feel this is unconstitutional because, as a person that is not on a water public water or sewer district, uh, I don't have any grievance process. It either means I don't either have a grievance process or one signature is enough to fight this thing. Uh, the language in this stat or 
code states that. I also think that this is illegal because it's an overreach of um, a distance-based thing, like you're saying about the urbanized areas, to say the whole county is involved. I have nothing but woods in my lane. You should pay me to keep it uh, without parking lots or without roofs or anything. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, it's a fee with no benefit. I'm going to pay $40 for what, two to five years with no benefit coming back to me. And I don't see how that's constitutional either. So I would just like to see a show of hands. You said we voted for that. I would like to see a show of hands uh, of the members that did vote for that. So we'll know who to vote out. Yeah, I'll have to show four of us were here. Mr. Barnhart said he would be in agreement with it. It was $3.50 a month and he had to leave before the vote. So you're looking at us and I'll uh, only make another, I don't, I'm not supposed to make comments and have dialogue back and forth. It's not the choice of the county council or the storm district. Whose choice is This is a choices? federal law. Federal law. The names. The Waters of the U.S. was rescinded name, just last month. The names that you need to call is on that paper. Okay. All Thank right. You, sir. Thank you. Thank you very Make sure you take one of those handouts, sir. Please. It has all your contact information on it. Anybody else? State your name for the record. My name is Macy McDonald, and uh, I think we, what the problem is in this county is there's too much building going on, and you all run now places to put the sewer, and now you want us to pay pay the bill that, so you all can have a new treatment plant built. It doesn't have anything to do with the uh, sanitary sewer, man. Well, I think it does. Okay. It does. You know, if seven years ago, Doug, you and I had this discussion. It's not the sanitary, it's storm. Yeah. Storm. But you're always blaming. The sewer getting into the storm. I mean, it's running across Route 9 every time that it gets a bad rain. Right there at the turn on Route 9, it runs across the road. It happens down there at Petrucci's all the time. Y'all don't do nothing. Y'all got too much going down the pipes. Way too much. This county council is not the sewer district or the storm district. We are the county council that runs the body. That's a whole different Well, problem. when we went to the meeting there the other night every time we asked them a question they said talk to you all well, you know so we come up to talk to you all and now you all is just it's it's just around a circle you know you all got to do something to build it you know the building's got to slow down that's the problem you know, I mean you put Procter and Gamble up there with a hundred acres under roof and blacktop you know Mother Earth can't take blacktop and concrete that's where the global warming is coming from not the other stuff you know, when you cover up your body, doesn't your body decay a little bit and they rot off when you got a cast on your arm? That's what the earth is doing, and that's what your all's doing to it. Your all's killing it. Right. You know, that's what you all got to look for. You got one of the papers? Oh, I got one of the papers. Hold the pause, please. Anybody else? Faith Hall, lifelong resident of Hedgesville. I went to the meeting the other night. Um, I am on public, or I am on a well and septic. Uh, we have no drainage problems at our residence. Uh, while I was at the meeting, I requested a copy of the proposal that the um, stormwater board submitted to you all for vote. And consideration my question is once they submitted this to you did you alter it in any way we had the right to approve deny or modify the rate okay the rate. but if you modify once it has the first reading do you not have to <coughs> re-notify the citizens and go back through the two-time procedure for notification again that's our legal counsel right there. no Okay, how about on July 29th, the district mailed notices of the upcoming meetings to projected customers. Some of the people on water or well and septic received them, some did not. The meeting was held on, the first meeting was held on August 6th. My question is, I'm, I don't know why your lawyer or one of you all did not catch this, but the first publication for that August 6th meeting in the Martinsburg Journal 
It was published August 7th, the day after. I think there's a problem there. Um, so if another proposal was rewritten, basically the ones that the stormwater board wrote was a bait and switch to screw over the citizens of Berkeley County. Um, why is a financial feasibility study from 2015 being used as for what to charge the customers today? It seems like, you know, that's kind of, with all the development in this area, it's not going to be correct. You're not going to have correct numbers. And had you not given Mr. Davis a $30,000 raise, you could have paid for one, one MS4 program assistant for one year. I have contacted the West Virginia's Attorney General's office and I have asked for a fraud investigation. And some of you on this board I have known for a long time and I consider you my friends. I did consider you my friends not when you continue to screw over this county. You need to put a stop on your development, your development, and get these developers off the planning commission and start taking care of the tax-paying citizens of Berkeley County. And why is the Woods Resort exempt when they receive a bill from public water and public Nobody's there, not uh, In that paper that you all read through, it says they that are exempt. That was early on, it was modified. Well, could we get a copy of that, please? I'm sure you could. Thank Call you. Public information. Give her your information, and she'll get it for I'd ask you to hold the pause. And for the young gentleman here today representing the high schools, I'd like to leave you with one thought. Integrity is doing the right thing, whether you're being watched. All right. Do you want to give her your address, and we'll get you a copy? Sure. All right, anyone else? My name is Peggy Rager. I am not a resident of the city. I'm outside the city limits where I have pub I don't have public water or sewer. We do River County anyway. Okay. But I just have a concern with what I read recently about when Subblefield was in office, what happened to the grant that the federal government gave Berkeley County for this purpose? Actually, I don't think the county ever received the funding for the uh, flood. I think the reason, first of all, let me back up and say, Bill Stubblefield is not one of the names on that list. I know. So Bill wasn't one of the ones that approved to put the county in the, the whole county, entire county in the MS4 permit. However, I think there was a conversation with the DEP or the EPA that with cooperation from the, from the Berkeley County Commission at the time, that they would assist them on the flooding issue in Inwood, and it never happened. Okay, so now we're we're to this point where we're going to be fine if we don't meet the federal government requirements. But if they gave us that funding and we didn't use it, that's what my thinking is. If they really want to investigate, what happened to that money? I'd not like to know for certain that there was no money given or what happened to it. If there was money given, it would have been given to do a study. There was nothing given to actually fix the problem, from what I understand. There was a study done by a college in Maryland. Well, that was that was for the fee structure. She's that talking was, about that. That was for the that was way before flooding the, issue, the inwood and stuff. The, for it was a six hundred thousand dollar grant. Right. Uh, the money was used. Uh, we, uh, I believe, the commission then hired a fresher engineering. To study of the watershed right around uh, in the area and uh, the monies were spent as required by the federal government. I'd like to see that in writing. Also another concern I have is um, we get assessed this fee, it's not called a tax, it's a fee, and we don't pay it, we're going to lose our homes in two years. They're going to foreclose on our homes. That we're not the one that, that charges the fee. We're not the one that collects the fee. That's the storm sewer district. Well, you as the council for Berkeley County, I feel should protect a citizen and our homes for not paying this fee. If we don't have access to city water and sewer. We have fought and fought. I have done this 
I've been in here for eight years, and I've met with DEP, the EPA. Thank you, ma'am. You've got the right to vote me out the next election if I choose to represent you. All right? Maybe I don't keep yeah, this on a professional please. level, since we are in a professional but, hearing. But we have been working with this. I've been working with it for eight years with the DEP. It started with the DEP. DEP wasn't happy with the progress that the storm or the sewer district at the time was making, so they turned it over to the EPA. Well, the EPA wasn't happy with the progress that the storm sewer or the sewer district wasn't making. They turned it over to the Department of Justice. Again, it's a federal law that was put on the books by your federal politicians. Whether they support it or not, I don't know. But we are given the task to enforce that law. Not this body, the storm sewer district is. All we did was approve, modify, or deny the rate. That's it. That's our job. And, 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 and let me elaborate a little bit more. There's been, there was five meetings. There was five meetings that were announced for the public to advertise to the proper methods to the public to show up and give our concern, give their concerns about these fees, and we had maybe, maybe, maybe you you need to hold. Okay, you're not up at the podium right now. You're not. There was five, five meetings that were publicized to to have residents come up and give us their concerns. What we did was listen to those residents that came up and gave us the concerns that they had. And that's how we modified what the fee structure was. We changed it from 475 to 350. We made it, uh, we made it to uh, represent what the permit was instead of what they were trying to do with uh, solely the urbanized areas when they don't even have that permit. So we made it go to what it was supposed to do. We created uh, a similar uh, reduction for senior citizens but if you were so concerned all these people were so concerned why is it we're hearing you today after this happened okay now i'll ask the question and how not were then. how were those all those meetings publicized and where were they publicized in this little tiny oh. section in the journal because one of them my husband did see and he did attend a meeting so it's not that you're publicizing in bold face on the front page of the journal where you're um, people can see it clearly. Your citizens of Berkeley County. You're putting it in a tiny little spot <coughs> where no one really reads. We don't put it. We don't choose where it goes. Our, our you can what, what is, where what is it the goes. procedure? It was. It required. Um, the law requires publishment of a class two league wide, which we did, and that's West Virginia Code 16-13A-9. We notified. Um, we placed the ads that included location, dates, times um, on September 4th, 2019 and September 11th, 2019. And the public hearings were held on September 26th, 2019 at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. I understand your frustration because I've been dealing with this for five years and I'm frustrated that we have to do it at all. But for five years, I've been fighting to try to get this uh, done away with so that we don't have to and for five years I keep running into the same wall and then we put out for comment from the public to come to meetings and we get nobody to show up and now after the fact we got people complaining on social media and and basically because they didn't take the opportunity to show up and voice their opinions and help us come up with a solution you know don't don't think for a minute that we're not doing what we need to do because we worked hard on this issue and none of us none of us it this this issue is going to cost me over two thousand dollars a year that i have to pay for it you know do you think i want to spend that money absolutely not but we don't have another way out and if you have another way out if any of you have another way out i'd like to hear about it i'd like to sit down and discuss that and and i'd be glad you can call me my numbers public you can call me on my cell phone and i'll be glad to set up a meeting and talk about it because i can't find a way and i've worked at it for five years all right anybody else mr. Mr. mr president the other side of it having trying to represent the public 
the threats from the judicial center, the, ju uh, the judicial part, was $55,000 a day for every violation they could find. Okay, if we didn't get something in place by December 31st. Now, looking at that perspective, that's a fine of $18 million a year. If we tell them to pound sand, to go away, and we end up in federal court, now you have $55,000 a day plus penalties. Per violation. Per violation. Had you not settled your laurels for the last 10 years and implemented a $2 fee 10 years ago, you could already comment. You can already comment, Just, you you can already comment at, the, at the podium. We're not going to have open dialogue. Okay. She's making a statement. I'm just making a statement to the effect you want us to be prudent with your money. Let me tell you what that $18 million counts for every person in the county. That's a three over $3,000 a person if we end up getting those fines. And we don't, we're trying to be prudent and do the best we can. We're holding them off. We're waiting for the MS4 issue to be redefined if that's what happens and in order to meet the code so we don't, we can later on, we can go to court. But you can't go to court without the fines and penalties going up. You've got to stop the, the avalanche at the top of the hill. And, and the, the real the real issue, I'm going to give another comment, the, the, the real issue is not with this body. No. We're your local representatives. I'm sorry. You know, we're, the, we're, we're where the buck stops. But at the same time, we don't write federal law. We don't do it. Nor did we put the whole county under the permit back in back when Steve Teufel, Howard Strauss, and Ron Collins was there. All right? This, this body is doing what they can to make it the most affordable for the county residents of Berkeley County. And, you know, I've heard comments in the last month about industrializing Berkeley County and PNG and all that stuff. What happened in the old days, what, what made Martinburg and Berkeley County what it is today? What happened to those? When you had GM, you had Corning, you had 3M, you had Interwoven Mill, and that's just a few of the big boys that all folded up and left. You know, that's what this county and this city was built on. And, and for anyone to talk bad about bringing business back to Berkeley County and providing jobs for you and your, your, your siblings and maybe your grandchildren one day, it just doesn't make sense. So, anybody else from the public? <laughs> You're talking about bringing business to Berkeley County. That's great, and I don't think anyone has an issue with that. I think a lot of the issue is all this development going on, multiple homes, townhomes. No matter where you go in our country roads, you see them being built. And, That's a and, and just a com quick comment about that. They tried to, to stop that. Jefferson County has impact fees. They have zoning. Zoning has been on the ballot three times in Bergen County. You, the taxpayers, and the and the and the, the voters have voted it out three times. We cannot stop the growth. We can't do it. We have no mechanism. No, and then I guarantee you, the ones that's complaining about wanting to s slow up the growth would never want this county council to sign a 300-page document to tell them what they're going to do and what they can't do with the property. I have an another suggestion. I know a lot of people live in this county that still maintain their out-of-state tax. They live in this county and they have out-of-state tax. What does it, I don't know if this body has anything to do with it, but. We do have you, something to do with it and a very small thing is try to influence the legislators to do something about it. And we have taken that up every year as a topic when we discuss with legislators in our legislative session that that they need to be looking at ways to to change the laws right now so that those things don't happen. I think one simple solution would be it's not for us to decide though. That, it's a legislative have session. Voice in other you the, need the areas in this county. And I'm just gonna voice my opinion here and let everyone hear what I feel about. He's in the audience so he hears you Okay. okay. But right. um you have a personal property tax, you have a real estate tax. If you live in this county, you're paying your real estate tax, not necessarily. You may own a home and live elsewhere. Fine. You can compare. There's a computer program, I'm sure, somewhere. Compare who's paying their personal property tax, who's paying their real estate we, tax. We, we do that. It, and it's a little bit more in depth. It's the more so the people that rent. And we're in a pro we've been in the process with the 
with the assessor's cooperation to cross-reference the school, yeah, the school, right? Okay. The school enrollment, the real way. estate, and all that stuff. So we're, we're this body doing everything we can to do Thank that. Thank you, because I, I think that's a big issue in Berkeley County. It is. I mean, the revenue we're losing by letting these people live here without having their cars registered and paying their personal property tax is probably economical. And, and there is another thing that's been brought up in this too, is that some of the cars that you see, not all, I agree with you, it's a big problem, could be cars that By are leased company, from a different correct. company. Exactly. Okay. I understand all that. Okay. But, fine. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Anyone else? I can't let you keep, I'll, I'll let you come back up one time. It's, it's not about stifling growth in Berkeley County. Why should a 95-year-old woman that owns two acres pay the same fee as Procter & Gamble that's making millions of dollars a year. It's about making things right and making the taxes based on the impervial services. And that's their goal. Their goal is to do that, but however, they need staff in order to calculate that off. That, that that that's, if you that's start why doing that right away, you would accrue more money. A lot but that's why you need to be in the beginning process when we had all the meetings, because all these things were discussed in the meetings on the process of how, how this many is going. How here get the Martins? How this is going wait, to wait, wait, come on. How, this that's how this is going to take place, and so we went through that process. I mean, all that's public information. You can go on our website and go and pull up the meetings that we had and look at what happened. I mean, it, that, none of this is trying to keep anybody out of it. Matter of fact, we, we now have a, 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 an individual works for the county that that's his job just to make sure that the public gets all these informations on every different media site so that we can do that. That's what we're working toward. But that's what he just started. Okay. He just started. So now he's drinking from a fire hose because nobody's ever done that. I mean, one of our goals here is is to be as transparent as we can. We want we want the interaction when we put these meetings together. If we put a meeting together and nobody shows up, how are we supposed to make an educated decision on what you think if you don't show up? We so can't do it. What are we going to do about the water board meeting that was held on the 6th and was published on the 7th? The water I don't know what the water board does. That's mm -hmm. Jim yeah, Barnhart's uh, board. What does the water board do? No, he's, she's talking about the, the, the sewer, sewer, the storm the board. Storm yeah, board. I, don't, I don't know. I don't, and if it there's was out of your law firm that I got the company. It's not out of my law firm. I work for the county only. So you've got to get was, your facts together. Law. You have to get your facts right. I, I don't think your fact is right about the publication. Uh, that was looked well, then, at very then, carefully. And, then, then and just to set the record straight, the advertisement didn't just appear in the journal. The advertisement appeared on our website. It appeared on the sewer board's website. It was talked about on radio. It was all over the county. And anybody who was paying any attention at all would have known about the meetings. If you weren't paying attention, you didn't know about the meetings. That's the only way you wouldn't know about the meeting. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Good morning. My name is Darla Springer. I didn't know about any of the meetings at all. I, I found out through social media. Um, I became very upset, and I have to apologize to Elaine because she's the one that got the blunt of the whole call. I was so mad when I found out about this. Um, but besides that, we did go to a meeting on Tuesday and not one county council person showed up to answer our questions. Nobody answered any questions until we became very upset and said some things that probably shouldn't have been said. Then the gentleman was very kind to start answering some of our questions. But I would uh, like to know if having, you have we're, a plan. Wait a second. Go ahead. It is not our job during public comment to comment back. We're only doing that out of respect to you. But you voted. We, we voted, but I'm that's talking right. about that's the reason. Tip, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, 
we should not be commenting back and forth and having dialogue on this. We're, we're only supposed to listen to what you have to say okay. and not say a word. So we're just being more respectful, in my opinion, to be able to, to address some of your concerns, okay? They, they were, they, in my opinion, I don't know if it's law, but they were, they were basically following the guidelines that set out. Public comment, since it's not an agenda item, first, but we should just let you talk, okay? But when we were invited there, we were under the impression that we were gonna get our answers and hear our concerns, and we didn't. But I would like to know if there is a plan in place uh, for the fees uh, we understand that when you implement that this fee, you're hiring five people to study the this. Sewer district we're is not hiring five people. That's, that's Pardon? not the, the sewer, sewer district. district. It's a storm. It's okay. a storm water management. So the sewer is the going storm, to be storm using this money. This is storm, storm, storm water. water. The storm water. They're going to be using this money yes. from the fee. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. They'll be and, collecting the fee, and those are the ones that are hiring the people to do exactly what was talked about. Okay. Started calculating the impervious area, actually come up with some things to be able to, to give people credit. In other words, and, and so one of the things that was talked about in the public comments was rain barrels. If you have a rain barrel, you're collecting the water. You're not, this whole thing is not about sanitary sewer. It's all about water runoff on properties from impervious areas, all right? So one of the things that everybody talks about is the uh, herd is the growth, the the runoff on impervious area. For years, this, the planning commission and the engineering department has been regulating and capturing the first inch of rain on new construction. All right. Okay. Most houses don't capture the first inch of rain. So that anybody that's building new construction or doing developments or Everybody's talked about a PNG. Go up to PNG one time. Just take an aerial photo. Just just go on the internet and Google Google it from the air, right? And see how big their stormwater pond is. All right. And it's not only about the quantity of water, but it's also they got to filter and it's the quality of water. I can assure you, none of your houses have stormwater quantity and quality. Of PNG, so they would be entitled to a credit, as any other people, Macy's, all the all the businesses coming in, they have to do stormwater management, all right. And over the last, I think it's been the five, five years, it was all about the quantity. Now it's also about the quality, all right. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to ask something else too. I've been trying to study this, but the MS4 was adopted in 2004. We are the only county that is in the MS4. Mm -hmm. Can we opt out of that? We have tried and tried. We've asked so. and asked, and they said no, because we, we meet the criteria. Now, it's not, the, the thing about it is, and, and don't hold me to this, but my my understanding is, is the, the, the split that, the urbanized area is the area up and down 81 corridor. Correct. All right, that's because of the public water and sewer, you have the density, right? So, so, and and the, right now the the EPA says it's any drainage that goes into the urbanized area is what has to be captured and 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 actually recorded and managed. That's what the fees for. In other words, you calculate the impervious area, manage managed and, and addressed any flooding issues which we all know we had more rain the last two years ago and and three years ago than we've ever seen in our life right so i'm sure and i'm not speaking for him i don't want you to assume me wrong is a lot of that is and, and our own engineering department is doing it with the state of west virginia right now through the department of transportation uh, is is trying to address partner up with them and telling them where some issues are and maybe how to solve it and working along with people, trying to pull people together to try to figure out how do you how do you fix this problem. One of the problems is, and you, you people, Route 11 South or North has been an issue down by the 7-Eleven back when my mom and dad lived in a trailer back then. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad's 84 and 85 years old. All right? This is back when they were 20-some years old that flooded. 
all right? So it wasn't any of the new growth that created a problem. Actually, the, the, the problem started, I believe, back in the 60s when 81 went through. So, so it's, it's to try to work better with the people to improve our community. Now, the watershed, the urbanized area, again, going down through 81 corridor. So anything from the Jefferson County line, Virginia line, Maryland line, and North Mountain is draining into that urbanized area. From what I understand, what has been applied for is anything outside that urbanized area, which would be Back Creek Valley, so from the mountain to, to Morgan County, is being asked to be removed from that permit, all right, because they don't have the density. That's what they're working on very, very hard. Matter of fact, I think it, the permit's already been filed to modify, I should say, the paperwork's been applied for to modify the permit. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one other comment. She was saying that we did not attend the meeting Tuesday. That was, Darla, yes. Tuesday's meeting was not, it was the Stormwater Board that we were not, I didn't even, was not even aware of the meeting. Well, and, 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 and we I don't, don't this is yeah, this is our meeting here. This is our meeting here. We, we don't, we don't, we don't go to every board meeting. That's not our job. There, there is one of us, a liaison that goes, and we always try to go to our own meetings. Sometimes our schedule just doesn't allow. But not anytime more than two people, two of us meet, it's a public meeting, and we got to advertise it two days prior to the meeting. Plus agendas. They didn't even have it on their agenda either. I mean, all they had on their agenda was, you know, the basic roll call agenda packet, right, approval, all public <coughs> yeah, citizens' participation. Was was what everybody went to right. get involved in. There, there wasn't a, a dialogue for, um, for how the fee structure was going to be or implementation. Right. None of it. There was a, there was an item on it uh, that they were going to discuss the, uh, um, uh, how they implement uh, implementation was being updated. That's all. Penny, you want to? We got a lot of interviews coming in today. You want to try to? I don't know if we can reach out to some of them and tell them we're going to be behind schedule. I, so I, I, I sent Nick a message already. Okay. Yes, sir. State your name. Good morning. Your record, please. John Weller, Back Creek Valley. What is the chance of this thing getting amended to where Back Creek Valley is not considered into this urban area? The, you know, the, I'm on the Sleepy Creek side of the Back storm, Creek Valley. The Storm District thinks there's a pretty, and they're legal council thinks there's a pretty good chance. However, you're dealing with the federal government and the EPA and the Department of Justice. So that's out of all, that's that's at the federal level. No, I'm, we're not in an urbanized area. We have no public sewer. We have no public water. We have no public uh, TV. You, you, don't have no, you don't have no good internet. Don't have any of <laughs> Don't have any of that. You know, yeah. basically, you know, up till about four years ago, we were still on uh, a shielded cable for telephone. You know, so. it, I, all I can tell you that it, the permit is right now being asked to be modified. The paperwork's already been filed. Well, what do you consider as urban as area? Uh, uh, um, yeah. I was looking for Gary. He's the IT guy. Actually, the urbanized area is defined by, by the, the census by the EPA. Yeah. based on the census and, and that'd be the 81 portal yes sir and it's a thousand it's a thousand people per, per square mile a square mile i think yeah it, there, there's a there's a map out that yeah. has the heat map on it where the urbanized area is but please don't it's just not the urbanized area it's the drainage area in the the, that goes in well, the urbanized my, area. my drainage water whenever i apply for the permits to take my wooded area I had to put it in a retainer pond. Mm -hmm. So my my area that I have my retainment pond is dry all the time. But that's that's another thing that our engineering department, our planning, remember I just said any new construction has to follow the, the MS4 regulations set out by the federal government. That's that's what I'm saying. Any new construction has to do what you're doing. Mine was twenty years ago. I had to put in a retainment pond. I had to put in silk fence. Mm -hmm. I had to put, well, I was requested not to put in a culvert by the state. Well, I paid for all those fees. Again, I said the water quantity has been on the books for years. The water quantity has just been the last five years, probably. 
for the amount of water quality that goes into a federally protected marsh. I understand. Good. And I don't see the federal government over there raising cane that the, the marsh is not up to standard. No, the federal government just comes to us and raises cane and tells us to I don't think they I don't even think they've come to you and raised cane about the marsh being. No, nothing happened. But yeah. they have raised cane about not, being not following the law. So what is the chance of this thing being uh, to where the people over in Back Creek Valley I in the north answer, side? I, I can't answer that question. I can't give you the percentages because I'm the, we're, this body isn't the one that makes that determination. It's the stormwater board. And if it, and if it, could if it, the EPA that I, if the EPA says that, that we don't have to be in it, are we going to be refunded any of the funds that we have put in? Will we be notified? You know, I don't read the newspaper. I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't watch TV. Currently, you are in the permitted area. You yeah. know. All right. The whole county is in the permitted area. So to get a refund, I can't answer that because we're not the one collecting the fee. We're not that part of the government. If you if you look, if you look, anytime you see anything from the water and the sewer district, does it have a county tag or a state tag on? I don't see it over my. Has a state tag. I don't They're see. a complete different entity. We've only been given the responsibility to either approve their rates, deny their rates, or modify their rates. That's all. We're actually functioning at that point in time. We're functioning as the Public Service Commission. So you're going to modify those rates they, when this happens? We've already told we them already that they did. will. We already did. We, we, we modified Absolutely. what they requested. Absolutely. That's what I said a little bit ago about creating exemptions for the senior citizens and and changing the fee from 475 to 350 you know those are those are some of the things that we did when we when we uh, had the meetings and listened to the comments of everybody that came and gave us input on what the the citizens of Berkeley County would like to see happen so we listened to those comments and reacted to them by modifying the request from the stormwater board what I'd like to see is this here board but more out there for social media because when one person reads it on social media the whole world hears about it it's out there it's and, and apparently it didn't get out there until hey, Chad, Tuesday matter, wait, wait, matter of fact, wait, 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 Chad, wait no apparently it didn't get out there till Tuesday because I didn't I find out about that. it until Tuesday and then that's whenever I got my letter today the was today TV. actually where is the first time ever that that we're trying to stream on Facebook, isn't it? Facebook and YouTube. Sp oh, Facebook and YouTube. So, so you're being streamed right now. So that's so you're wonderful. you're famous. I might be convicted. Not <laughs> 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 you're still not burning anything. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? But Mr. President, I'd, I'd like this to make just my own personal um, issue that I had. Uh, when it comes to dealing with the Department of Justice, I was charged by the Department of Justice on something that I didn't do and something as trivial as a, an emotional support animal. I know what it's like to be charged. I didn't like it, and I didn't want that same thing to happen to this county. So the decision I made was solely based on, you know, the better option for the county versus what the Department of Justice was going to do to us. Now, after this meeting, I'll tell you exactly what I went through. I don't think I need to air it to the public, but I'll be more than happy to sit down and tell you what I went through with the Department of Justice. It's not good. It's not easy, and it's not fun. So the decision I made when I made my vote <coughs> was to make it better so it wouldn't be as bad for the county as it would be that I had. All right. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You even need to state your name for the record so you can be broadcast across YouTube and all the social media. My name is David Williams. Someone I lived in Calvert County years ago in Maryland. I ran a business several years down there. Um, I was a And 
if you if this doesn't pertain to you, like I'm on a well and septic on Ellenworth Mountain, older people with a fixed income, why can't they have something that comes every year and you either are exempt? Well, first of all, um, I think that's a good thing to bring up too, and that's that's something that should be brought up to the stormwater, the the stormwater board, because the stormwater board is they're they're in the process, the starting process of this whole thing is 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 putting together what they're going to do moving forward and how they're going to continue to meet the requirements of their permit and. Those are questions, the exemption questions, the, the, the guy that's got the pond, you know, those things are, are things that that board needs to hear. If you want to make a difference in, in what's going on with this, you need to attend those meetings and make sure that they understand from the public how these things can happen because they have to make an educated decision and if they don't get the education they're going to make a decision on what they have available so it's in my opinion it's very important that you relay those type of concerns and everybody relay their concerns to that board so that within the next year while they're going through this process then they can they can cater or or, or um, or, or build that process to meet the needs of what the community thinks they need to have. Well, does that make I mean, sense? Like situation a absolutely. And that does need to be considered in something like this. Right, and we and we did the same thing. We looked at we looked at people on fixed income, and that's why we modified. And and uh, I think we did the twenty percent, well, didn't we? Fifteen percent, same as the property tax. The thing that bothers me is that they can just put this on everybody, and you don't use. The services and then if you can't pay it then they can put a lien on your property it's, i don't even know if that's it, legal. it's the, the service that's going to be provided is to comply with the uh, epa permit that's the that's the service that is going to be provided mm -hmm. okay it doesn't it's have absolutely. anything to do with whether you have public order or sir right? right i understand that um and the the, the website that you can go to, our county website, is Berkeley, uh, I guess it's berkeleywb.org? Yes, sir. All right. So, right, so, so yeah, you want to go to I social media? I understand. America doesn't use computers. I can't afford it. And, and well, you know what? I have a hard time doing it myself. But berkeleywb.org is our county website. Every minute, every future meeting is posted. The agenda is posted two days before the meeting. And it will also direct you to our face uh, or our, our social media pages, okay? And you can go there, real easy, um, berkeleywb.org. Well, right. I just wanted to make a suggestion. We, we are. We, we do to try to do that. As a matter of fact, we've made suggestions to the assessor about different things of, of educating people on their uh, their assessment form on, on classifications. Right. However, it's on the website, but it'd be nice to be able to educate. And part of the part of the pro process on this stormwater fee is the educational part. And this this body goes to the fairgrounds every year. We set out front. Anybody that that wants to come up and ask us questions, we have flyers there to educate well, people on the MS board. The importance of this runoff, and I realize the importance of all this about the Chesapeake Bay. I live down there on the bay for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I do know a lot of really wrong things go on and are covered up that affect our day greatly. But the, and the, but you know what and that answers that answers a little bit of the question that I've heard several times that I don't need this fee and and you know you you may very well not need this you may not not need this service but but uh, unfortunately there there are people that need to be watched to make sure that they follow the guidelines and if there's not something like this to be able to watch then then the people that are supposed to be following the guidelines and don't who's overseeing them if you don't have something like this so um you know it, it is it is unfortunate that it has to everybody that has to pay without a doubt here's one of the things that was told to me by by a friend is um this whole MS4 and the Chesapeake Bay Water Act 
that we're all involved in, I'm glad that the, the TV stations and everybody's here, is that, you know, it's been, the, the, the sewer district, I think, sp think spent 60 some thousand dollars to upgrade their plants, their main plants, yeah, right? 60 some million. million dollars, okay? Which, that, which a large percentage of that was passed on to the ones that used the sewer, okay? And some of it was state grants, all right? So, so, but, so but elaborate on that sixty million. They, they, the sewer board fought the EPA <laughs> and tried not to do the upgrade to the plants and lost. They, they lost. So they, they took it to court and tried to win and they couldn't. So they had to do those upgrades. So they still had to do the upgrades plus pay the penalties. Pay and the, the fines. fines. All right. So the, the one thing that was brought up to by a friend, which makes great sense, the fishery business in the Chesapeake Bay has went up billions of dollars twice in the past 10 years right in the billions each one of you, you if you're on the sewer public sewer have paid in to clean up the bay wouldn't it be nice that that the federal government would put a, a, a law on the books to say we'll pay you back the dividends you paid to clean it up but you're not getting any credit for what you paid for it makes absolute sense. Any other time you make an investment somewhere, you're going to get paid dividends if it works. All right. So those are the some of the things. Again, we're the ones that we're the ones that you can come to once a week and complain. And I thank each and every one of you for being here. But really, this is this is somewhere where you need to pick up the phone on those contacts there and call your your federal politicians with respect. I'm not sicking anybody on them. I'm just telling you, the, the law is not a, a county law. We don't make laws. We're just given the task to enforce state and federal laws. That's it. There's not one law that we create in Berkeley County. We do regulations, okay? And this body is not about over, being over-regulated. We're, we're about doing what we need to do to provide us clean drinking water. But this county is not, this, this county council body is not to over-regulate any of them. All right? Anyone else? Okay, again, thanks for each, each and everyone for being here and voicing your concerns. And we've heard you very loud and clear, and we're trying to, trying to work through most of your issues that you addressed today. And, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that the sewer, or the storm district keeps you informed, okay? Thank you. Need a motion to approve the agenda. <laughs> Mr. President, I move we approve the agenda if there's no modifications for Thursday, November the 7th. The motion's been approved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. Any questions on the purchase order? Um, question on page 17. Robert's Land Survey? No. Page 17 of the purchase order or on the iPad? 17 on the iPad. That is the agreement that this council um, came to. Uh, it was a joint agreement between the Development Authority, P&G, and the county to deal with the um, stormwater. On P&G? And the area of P&G, and that's yeah, okay. the that council, council did authorize that. Anything else? Okay, no internal budget revisions. Looks like we have some changes. Status: New hire recommendation received from Eddie Gokenair, Director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, for Aaron Obitz, um, Justin Murphy, Noah Sipe as part-time as-needed firefighters with an hourly rate of twelve dollars and sixty cents, effective November eighth, two thousand nineteen. Letter of resignation received from the circuit clerk's office for Gina Moen, effective October the 30th, 2019. Letter of resignation received from the sheriff's office for Deputy Daryl Cox, effective November 22nd, 2019. Letter of resignation received from the fiduciary office for Maria Childers, effective December 31st, 2019, which Maria has been employed here for 40 years? 41 plus. 41 and a half. It's retirement. It's retirement. It's retirement. It's retirement. I'm sorry, retirement. 
right. A well-deserved one? Yeah, 41 years. All right, we have minutes for October 22nd, 2019, um, and um, Vice President Delier was not present for the assessment of appeals. We need a motion to approve or modify those. Mr. President, I move to accept the minutes from October 22nd, Board of Assessment Appeals. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. Any Abstain. Any changes on the October 24th uh, meetings? Everyone was present. We'll keep them part of the consent agenda. Sorry. County Council calendars. Uh, we are here today. We're scheduled to be in, at, in Sorga at 1 o'clock. I'm sure we're going to miss that. Um, so I guess we'll just uh, reschedule that. We'll be here. The county offices will be closed to observe Veterans Day on Monday the 11th. And we'll be back in the chambers next Thursday at 930. Boards and commissions. We have, looks like we have Tuesday night, the 12th at 6 p.m., Farmland Protection. Wednesday the 13th, 9.30 a.m., Development Authority. 10 a.m., Conventions and Visitors Bureau. 6 p.m., Roundhouse Authority. Thursday the 14th at 6.30 p.m., the Fire Board will be in the chambers. Um, the uh, Water District actually meets on the 12th instead of the 18th. Okay. All right. Uh, we also have a resolution in the uh, in our packet to support the physical year 2019 pre-disaster mitigation grant. Any questions on that? And we have a bond reduction for Arcadia Communities LLC, Yorkshire Glen Phase One, Section One, Section Two A, and Engineering Department has made that recommendation. We'll see Dirk here. Right. Brian. Brian. I don't think there's any need. If we don't have any questions, Brian. All right. Thank you for being here, though. Thank you. Need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion's been Second. made. Seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. It just came to me, to Anybody that's still here on the MS4 stuff, one thing you want to keep an eye on at the federal level is the United States Water Act. That's going to regulate every puddle, every ditch line, every farm field, right? That was on the books. It was supposed to be implemented. However, they did push it back, but it's still there, all right? So if you think MS4 is bad, you wait until the U.S. Water Act passes. It's real. That's 10 times bad. 10 times worse, I should say. So... Now, that's the one that you want to call your federal representatives and say you don't want at all. I'm talking about from what I'm being told, it could be a puddle in your backyard. All right. Um, next is uh, uh, Mr. Hess, our county assessor, for some, uh, some uh, exonerations and consolidations. Good morning. Good morning. I know we're running behind, so I'll be quick here. Uh, just have from last week, uh, we had one personal property uh, taxpayer error that we had to bring to you. They, um, they reported the vehicle. It was uh, Alley Financial Trust, and they reported it. We had to we had to key it, so it was taxpayer error in the amount of. Three hundred and twenty-two thirty-nine. Good. All right. We have a need a motion on the one personal tax exoneration due to the taxpayer error. Mr. President, I move to accept the exoneration for uh, personal property in the uh, amount of three twenty-two thirty-nine. Second. Motion been you say accept right? Mm-hmm. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. All opposed? Uh, nay. Nay. Uh, it is, does not pass. Okay. All right. We did have, uh, we had four we had to correct last week. These were taxpayer, I mean, these were office error, personal property. And uh, for the four that we corrected, it came up to $508.44. So, Need a motion on four, 
fourth personal pro, uh, uh, personal tax exoneration due to office error. Make a motion to accept the four personal property office error for five hundred eight dollars and forty four cents. Okay. Motion to be made and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. And you have two applications for consolidation of the property. I do. And the first one's for MIRC LLC. They had uh, they had two parcels um, in the Martinsburg district, in Map Six, and uh, we had to put the we want to put them together to get one tax bill. So we we did that, and we have one for a Marquee Brent. Had two parcels uh, in Map Six R, uh, uh, parcel fourteen and fifteen. So we consolidated those. For the same reason, for one. All right, need a motion on a two application to consolidate the property. So moved. Motion been made. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Adams. That's all I have. Thank Mr. you. Mr. President, I'm okay if you want to skip the board and meeting reports to try to get back to towards schedule. I think that's a great idea. Um, I don't think I'm we have any reappointments there. And Ms. Buck, let's move on to honorary council person. <coughs> Logan Trotman, right up here, young man, and tell these folks where you go to school and uh, what sports you play or activities you enjoy. Looks like it might be boxing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right here. Just talk, talk to these folks here. Um, what school do you go to and all that good stuff? I go to South Middle School. Um, I play basketball for South, and I play lacrosse for the Berkeley County Rec Center. Great. South Middle School was a great school back when I went there. Still is. Now that you're not there. Quite better. <laughs> we won't discuss that when I went there, it wasn't South. Ah. <laughs> okay. That's all right, Miss Ma. Raise your right hand. I state your name. Do you swear on the prior? Do you swear on the prior? That will hold the Constitution. United States and West Virginia for the United States and West Virginia. I will work hard to fulfill responsibilities. I will work hard to fulfill responsibilities of the Office of Honorary Council Member to the Office of Honorary Council Member to which I've been appointed to which I've been appointed. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, next on our agenda is Maria Childers, uh, Fiduciary Supervisor, State Accounts uh, 40 Three still, Maria? Okay. Um, yes, we have actually two revisions on there. Um, Number 38, which was the estate of Joan Marion Stobbs, um, we received a uh, request to withhold that from approval. There are additional assets that will be coming to the estate. So there's going to be a revised settlement presented to you later, confirmation. And then we had one that we added back in, the estate of Genevieve Catherine Stump. There was an objection that was received, and that was very quickly resolved. So we've added that one back in. So we still have 43. So we'll begin with Harry Gerald Barnett, Naomi Harriet Barthlow, James Allen Bentz, Jean K. Brewis, also known as Doris Jean Harrison, Shirley Michael Brown, Joan M. Burkhart, Catherine Ann Kofelis Durkin, Marshall Dyer, Daniel Glenn Ellington, John Thomas Fetterline, Mary Louise Forrest, Anne Elizabeth Garrett, Janita G. Giles, Jan Sigurd Gummel, James Edward Pite, Mary Lorraine Jenkins, Gloria Jean Johnson, Julius Edward Jones, Carl Williams Jones, Loring Dale Keckley, Sue Ann McDonald, Harry Wade McQueen, Vincent Benjamin Mesa, also known as Vicente Bayona Mesa, Edgar Cecil Miller, Jr., Robert Lee Mongold, Leroy Enoch Morrison, 
Edward Allen Morrow, Guy Jr. Allers, Douglas Parkinson, Mary Beth Parson, Roy Richard Parsons, Dorothy Lee Poole, Timothy J. Powers, Vera Frances Bird Rollison, Rose Marie Shaw, Ramona Clara Hess Smith, Patsy Delane Soward, Genevieve Catherine Stump, Doris George Taylor, John Christopher Tripp, Dandria Dawn Wills, Lois D. Wolf, and Michael P. Young. Thank you, Maria. Mm -hmm. I need a motion on the state accounts. Mr. President, I move to accept the 43 state accounts. Second. Second. The motion's been made. Seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. Um, I see some people came in, Murray. You don't have any hearings to be scheduled. We have none to be scheduled. Okay. That's correct. So you have a 1045? We do. Okay. Um, uh, Is everyone present? I do not see Ms. Haas yet. Okay. She is the administratrix right. uh, and your petitioner. Um, she did call this morning to indicate she would be here. She okay. wanted to verify your locations. All right. Well, we'll take a quick break for photos okay. uh, and, uh, and a bathroom break, and then we'll remove
David Lee Adams. I'm sorry, Maria. Okay, um, yes, you've received a petition for hearing from Ellen M. Haas, who was qualified on October 22nd, 2019, as administrator of the estate of David Lee Adams. Um, Mr. Adams died a resident of Berkeley County in testate, no will. His sole heir at law is his father, Bobby Lee Adams. Um, on the 22nd of August, at the time of Ms. Haas' appointment, uh, Mr. Adams had accompanied her to our office and executed a waiver of appointment, allowing us to appoint Ellen. Uh, since that time, there has been uh, some, some issues have arisen uh, among Mr. Adams and Ms. Haas and uh, other family members, I believe. Um, she did subsequently file an inventory and appraisement of the estate. So we have that on record, and the uh, notice to creditors has begun with a claim period expiring on January 5th. We have received one claim against the estate from the 167th TFR Federal Credit Union in the amount of 8,707.76. So whoever, uh, uh, if you grant Ms. Ms. Haas motion to resign, um, the administrator of BBN will have to address that issue as well in the administration state. Uh, Ms. Haas is present this morning as well as Mr. Adams, again the father and sole heir of David Lee Adams. Um, I've not heard whether Mr. Adams wishes to take over as administrator DBN. I'm sure he'll convey that to you or if he would want to appoint somebody to do that on his behalf. Um, at this time we'll ask Ms. Haas to address the council as the petitioner. Ms. Haas. My name is Ellen Haas. I live in Berkeley County. And uh, I am the executive of my brother's estate. I took it over. I take all the pressure off my dad after my brother passed away. And I try to explain to everybody in my family what the executive state means. And they just think that the executive state means I got to pay his bills and my dad gets everything. They don't understand that I can sell anything on that property to pay the bills, to open a state account. I never did that. I never opened a state account up because I didn't want to put not my name on anything else if it's not. I paid uh, his cell phone bill, I mean his uh, cable bill. It was 300 and some dollars. I got knocked down to $18. I did. Mostly that's the only bill I was able to pay other than the uh, I paid for uh, trespassing signs and a lock through my brother's door. And uh, the paperwork, the $316 paperwork out. You know, my hands been tied. I ain't been able to get back down on the property. I can't get back in the house because they locked the doors on me. The dip open, and I cannot walk back in the house. And I was told if I walk in the house that I'm stealing from my dad. They don't understand. And I really need to be all the paper. So you I want to resign? I want all please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Adams? We'll try to speak up, sir. Thank you. My name is Bobby Adams. Good morning, Bobby. And the only thing I'll do is she works on the paper to get out of the you know, get out of it. That's what she wants to do. Uh huh. And I guess I'll take it over. You're going to take it over? Yeah. Okay. All right. Those all paid bank payments and, you know, okay. for how much they're in there. I'll be able to pay $8,000 I'll pay for some years. Okay. So I'm going to pay it all, you know. Right. All right. I'll make ready to them in some way. Okay. All right. Well, let's start the process, Maria, and everything that we yeah. found with you, I'm sure. Yeah, Mr. Adams. I'll be responsible for the bill, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, I guess we need a motion to uh, remove uh, Ms. Haas as the secretary's administrator. We do it one motion to take one off. The two motions. I think we generally do it. Okay. Yeah, remove her. Okay. Make a motion that we accept the resignation of Ellen Haas as administrator of the estate 
Mr. Adams. Motion been made. Does have a second? Second. Second in any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. Ms. Moth? Next, uh, I'd like to appoint Bobby Lee Adams as the uh, administrator. Administrator. Whatever she said, DBN, uh, for the estate of Mr. Adams. Second. Uh, motion been made and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. All right. Next, we have board and commission uh, interviews. Um, first on the list is Eddie Gokenar, and it's for the LEPC board interviews. Eddie, it's going to be interesting for you to tell us something that we don't know about you, or maybe we'll have Candy come up and tell us something. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do my best. I will just leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, obviously, you know, I'm a lifelong resident. <clears throat> I've been uh, employed with the county since uh, March of 2010, which I've been a, uh, an active participant in the uh, LEPC. And uh, I tell you, we're, we're doing some of, the, some of the best work right now with this committee that we have put together with the LEPC that, that we've ever done, and I, I mean that. Um, we've, we've got a group of people that are willing to, to give of themselves. And you know, you can go to a meeting and you can talk and you discuss things, but a lot of times it takes action. And a lot of the folks that we're with, you know, they're willing to uh, stand up and present themselves and, and go do the things that they need to do. But in particular, uh, one, of the, one of the largest initiatives that we're working on right now, and it's gonna be a while before we're satisfied with it, but is the uh, Stop the Bleed program. And I'm uh, very proud of that. Uh, we've got some people who have taken uh, a real leadership role with that, and uh, it's going to make a difference, you know, in, in our community one day should should a, a catastrophe like that hit uh, one of our schools or businesses or or just in, in general, you know, out for recreation. That we're getting people trained up uh, to be able to save lives. Uh, as far as um, the LAPC, you know, it is mandated by the state, but... Uh, you know, just the people that we've been able to pull together uh, collectively. Yeah. Very, so very so you, it's a really good board. It, it absolutely is. Yeah. It's, it's healthy. Okay. Eddie, I have a question I have. Is, is uh, um, I thought there were certain positions that are mandated by the state and the state code, like the selfie, the homeland security, that kind of thing. Are there other positions that are that we, that we can just generally appoint, or is it by a position? Well, each each individual like, entity has to be represented, you know, on our board. You know, okay. between health, fire, okay. law enforcement, uh, public utilities, you know, all the schools, all these agencies, uh, you know, have a seat and a vote at the table. And we we have more people than that at the table, yeah. but but these these core group of people will have the voting right, where everybody else still has a voice. But, but there's only, you know, uh, I think it's 11 people that actually have that vote. And, and just so the council knows, typically um, these names would just be sent to the state for approval. Um, you've never gone through the, the interviewing process before, but because it is your LEDC, you felt it was appropriate um, to, to talk to as many folks as, as you could. Um, the names that are on your list today all meet the requirements of, of the code, Eddie and, and Randy made sure of that. Mm -hmm. So um, they are they are uh, uh, appropriately listed on on the on the as the group. Okay. All right. Uh, Eddie, I don't see um, sure there's nobody up there. Don't see a reason why we should keep you on the LEPC or make a recommendation. And basically, I think this is a, a procedural issue um, that. Uh, and as Mr. Davis said in years past, that the uh, state has appointed everybody without us knowing who was being appointed. And, and, you know, it's this board that we want to be part of that action. And, you know, well, make sure the right people's getting on. Yeah, you know, with with uh, with Randy's uh, leadership and our involvement, you know, we we put a very good group of people together, and you'll you'll be you'll be very pleased with the people you see from behind me today. All right, well, trying to get some. Uh, others up here and 
Anybody have any questions for Eddie? Make them tough. Hmm. All right. Is Ron here? No, it's okay. All right. Um, the other candidates, if you one of you want to come forward, because since I don't know your faces, I'm sorry. Um, you, Jeff. Hello, my name is Jeff Ah, good guess, right? Yep. This is the all right. Today. Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself that we all know. Well, first of all, thank you for having me today. Um, I've been a Berkeley County resident since 1991. When I moved up here to um, from Southern Maryland to go to Shepherd College. Uh, fell in love with the area. I've been up here ever since. Um, I've been a uh, city employee, city of Martinsburg employee since 2010, a public works director um, for the city. Um, over the past nine years or so, I've had the opportunity to work with many different agencies in the community, um, county agencies, state agencies, um, whether it's uh, disaster relief, storm issues, things of that nature. Uh, I think with uh, position that I'm in and, and being a county resident, I think it would be a good opportunity um, to get to know more people, more agencies, to be able to work together for planning reasons, for um, um, emergency response issues as well. Um, I think we've had a couple big snowstorms the last nine, ten years. Uh, we had the ratio back in 2012. Um, so there's a lot of good that you see from the other agencies that, that we're able to work together and to be able to meet and be a part of that planning commission would just uh, better those efforts in the future. Yeah, that was pretty interesting to watch the action on the ratio and mm -hmm. stuff that was going on and trying to get the right people at the right places. And mm -hmm. I know I was involved in trying to get a doctor from Maryland to uh, to the hospital in Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, uh, it was very interesting to see everybody come together and work as one. It sure is. And that's one thing about this community. It's very resilient. Everybody does come together when you need it. Well, we could have used you this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right, anybody have any questions for Jeff? I have one. Sure. Are you the one that uh, bear hunted at one time? No. Okay, somebody that No. Nope. All right. I gave somebody from the city one of my dogs, that's all. No, nope, it wasn't me. Okay, all right. Thank anybody, you, Anybody else have any questions? Thanks right. for your involvement. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for, for being part of this committee. <laughs> Are you one candidate? I'm sorry. Leanne? Yes. All right. I heard Ms. Mox Homer say something about Leanne, so I'm going to take a wild guess and say she was right. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm actually from a small business here in South Berkeley. Uh, it's called Kempac, and we deal with the aerosol and liquid packaging. Mm -hmm. um, I've been uh, attending some of these meetings, LEPC, uh, to get to know the community better and to uh, learn more about the um, EPA and so forth. Because I've been thrown into environmental and fire safety and so forth at our facility. So it was something new. I've been in the safety profession for over 25 years. And this is my first time I've been able to actually be involved in with the environment. Um, I'm enjoying it, and I, again, just want to know the community and get to know those individuals that uh, help out on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we always appreciate anybody wanting to jump in with both feet, and it uh, sounds like you have um, on the LEPC committee, and, and thank you for being a business in Berkeley County as well, thank as you. a resident, too. Anybody have any questions for me? Yeah. Try to make this as simple as possible. Thank you for stepping up. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thanks for getting involved. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I don't see anybody else right now. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, Mr. Davis, let's move on to bid recommendation for architectural services. Yes, sir. Um, as the council is aware, um, on, I guess, late July, um, the council authorized me to publish a request for qualifications 
for architectural and engineering services needed at 4520 South Raleigh Street. Um, our intent is um, we, we are currently working on moving facilities from the old CVS building, which is located at 520 South Raleigh Street to 750, or to 750 Baltimore Street. Um, we're doing that because, um, as, as you know, the Day Report Center has just simply outgrown um, the, the main building and the two portable buildings that we've placed at 800 Emmett Roush Drive. So the intent was back in July when I discussed um, the need for architectural services with you is to find qualified firm to do the design work at 520 South Raleigh Street so we can begin the process of moving um, the Day Report Center to, to that building. Since that time, um, we've had two other um, projects that have come up, uh, both of which I would recommend that we include uh, under the scope of work for uh, the architectural firm that is um, eventually selected. Um, several weeks ago, Bill Kearns, uh, who is our health uh, department administrator, met with Council President Copenhaver and I um, to inform us that the clinical side of the health department has outgrown their space at 122 Waverly Court. So um, quickly. Quickly. The, as you know, when you walk in, if you go to the right, um, you have the environmental services side. If you go to the left, it's the clinical side. Um, with what they're doing with um, harm, reduction. harm reduction and some other things, the demand that's on their services, they, they simply don't have enough um, space. Um, the good news is Bill um, and the health department has some money set up in reserve that they're willing to put towards the design and the construction of a wing um, to 122. And <coughs> when, really when you say look to put toward, basically paying the entire bill. Not knowing what, what it's going to be. Right. The majority of the expenses would be paid by the health department. <laughs> um, as you look at the health department, um, what we would have to do is move the radio tower which is just to the to the north of the building, which we've constructed, um, we can move that. And then we would actually go, I don't think it would come um, directly to the north, it would almost have to come out as a, at an angle to, towards the west. Towards the, the northwest portion of the building. Right. So, towards those buildings? And I'm not sure. Yes, the portable buildings. I'm not 100% sure that the tower has to move. I mean, that's Bill's determination. So we would include um, the design uh, in the wing for 122 Waverly Court um, in the overall project with 520 South Raleigh Street being the primary focus. Um, again, why we have a, a qualified firm um, on retainer, I would also like to get authorization from the council to um, begin the design work uh, on the first floor of this building to move the county clerk's operation from 100 West King to, to this building. Uh, our intent all along is to, was to make this your government, the Berkeley County government campus. Um, you've done that with um, moving fiduciary offices and voters registration from 110 um, West King Street to here. Um, I know that uh, Council President Copenhaver has had discussions with um, Mr. Small, the county clerk, about moving the county clerk's operation down here, um, and we would like to, to uh, have uh, the vacant space downstairs designed to meet the needs of the county clerks so we can move them down here. So having said all of that, um, we did publish the legal ad on August the 1st, 2019, we do have certification publication on file uh, and in your packet. We received proposals on August 14th, 2019. Uh, on August 15th, 2019, the council opened the responses to the RFQ. Um, we received seven packets. We reviewed the seven packets and on Wednesday, August the 30th, 2019, the selection committee, which was composed of uh, myself, Tracy McCormick, the procurement coordinator, Tim Zaya, the community care corrections director, and Jack Langer, facilities uh, director, met with 
Crabtree, Rohrball, and Associates Architects. Uh, if you remember, they're the ones that did some uh, of the architectural work, the design, preliminary design work on the Crawford building. Um, we also uh, interviewed representatives from Alpha and Associates, uh, architects and engineers, um, who have their main building, their main headquarters in Morgantown, but also have uh, an office here. And then we, lastly, we designed, uh, we interviewed design concepts, which actually helped us with some of the design work um, on the emergency service, phase four of the emergency services uh, building down at 802 on Grouse Drive. Um, these firms were selected because we've worked with all three of them in the past, and they are all three familiar with, with Berkeley County. Uh, after careful consideration uh, of the firms, uh, qualifications, the committee unanimously recommends to the council um, the selection of Crabtree, Rohrball, and Associates Architects for the award of this bid pending cost negotiations. Um, as the council knows, if you agree with the recommendation, We'll then bring um, representatives in from Crabtree, Rohrball, and Associates. We'll discuss um, the cost of all three of the different projects. Uh, if we feel that um, their proposal is, is within budget, something that we can afford, we'll bring that back into the council. If we cannot reach a price uh, agreement with them, then we'll move to the second uh, most qualified. Uh, architectural firm on the list. So with that said, Mr. Davis, we're looking to get a motion to move forward with, with our ball grab tree Correct. associates not to afford them anything. No, sir, we're not. We're right. not signing a contract. We haven't reached so an agreement. A, All I want is consensus from the council to move forward. Direction. Yes, sir. Okay. So not even a motion. No, so sir. Everybody okay with Mr. Davis moving forward? Well, just one question. Uh, you mentioned three projects. Is there any chance that additional projects would be tacked onto this, or is this strictly for these three projects? Right now, it's just for those three. If something pops up, we could add to well, it. Well, that's what I was wondering. Sure. Uh, this doesn't limit us to those it three does projects. Not. No. Okay. No, when we put the original RFQ out, it was just for 520. Yeah. And from the time that the RFQ went out in July until now, we've added some additional. Okay. All right. That's what I wanted to know. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, so I guess the. You want a motion or you yeah. want. This consensus of the council. Oh, to fine with me. Yeah. Yes. Is, that, yeah. is that consensus of the council to um, move forward with their recommendation for the um, architect and the uh, design for the lower level? For the. Well, it's for day report center. Day report center. Lower level. Lower level and. 520. Okay. 520. Um, 122 okay. and lower level. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, Andy Lilly came in the room. You're up for an uh, interview. Can we bring you for the interview? You're not here for that. I can see it on your face, but we're <laughs> going to interview you anyway. It's real easy, quick. Just tell us a little bit about yourself that we don't know about. Relatively clean. Give us all your secrets. Like why you Ellison? Tell us why you like serving on the LEPC board. And maybe even why you're limping there coming in. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's a woodcutting accident. We won't get into details <laughs> about document that. Document that, Mr. Davis. <laughs> yes, sir. Is that part of Stop the Bleed, Randy? Was that part of Stop the Bleed? There, there was no blood. So that was a good thing. <laughs> but no, I've, I've applied to uh, be on the LEPC board. I've currently been chairing the LEPC for almost four years. Uh, and uh, it, it's just another step towards uh serving the community in, a, in a, the aspect and in a way that we can make our community safer and, and, and better for our community members within Berkeley county i understand it's a great uh, committee it is a lot it, of things getting done a lot we've got a lot of good things going on uh, uh the committee is growing uh there's more interest with uh with a lot more attendance within the lepc me meetings uh, a lot more industry getting involved uh, it's growing, and, and again, there's a lot of good things coming out of out of the LEPC meetings to stop the bleed, along with with many others. Well, the scope has changed from the day it started. Yeah, of course, you weren't there the day it started. I was. Uh, you know, we. You and Miss Mopper have been around for years. Well, yes, <laughs> I, I must admit, 
but uh, you know, it started out just inventorying products that industries had on site. Is how it started. Correct. And it's a lot broader than that. And our state guidelines, the LAPC, that's kind of their guidelines. It is is the the hazardous materials, the right to know mm -hmm. uh, act. But you know, we've expanded our LAPC, and it, it has become a a a place where we can all get together, we share resources, we share issues, we help each other out. It's, 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 uh, we're building partnerships and relationships with not just industry uh, and businesses, but with, with individuals as well. It's, it's, it's really flourishing and becoming a, a great thing in the uh, uh, emergency services, a great asset. You know, and a lot of good things coming out of it that are being pushed out to our community members. Randy, I think it's fair to say that you and, and Mr. Gokinair, uh, under under our <laughs> umbrella, a lot of things have changed for the better. And uh, it's uh, been an honor to work with you and, and Eddie and over the years. And you're always, both of you, and everybody on this committee is always concerned about this protecting their, our citizens of Berkeley County and what's best for them and what's best for our county as a whole. Yes. So I want to thank you and not only Eddie, but everyone who sits on the committee for the time of, 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 that they devote and um, to uh, bring us all together. Well, thank you, but I, I also want to thank the council uh, for supporting us. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without the support of you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. See anybody else here yet? Um, all right. So, surplus property, Mr. Davis. Yes, sir. As the council's aware, <laughs> last week I brought in two separate um, declarations of surplus property. You did declare 22 vehicles as surplus, and we are in the process of working through the um, the disposal of those vehicles. Uh, last week we also talked about the disposal of real property located at 110 West King Street, which includes an office building of approximately 10,286 square feet, and also real property located at 126 West King Street, which includes an office building of approximately 9,240 square feet. At that time, you wanted to take what for a week, um, think about it, and ask me to bring it back. So I'm back. Has Mr. Lutfeld made a review of the property yet? He, he has not completed that. Well, the reason I, I just, okay. That's the whole reason why we wanted to table it, was to find what, whether it's one piece of property, two pieces of property, three pieces of property, you know, our assessors, our assessor is, it shows it as one, I think, if I remember correctly, on the tax map. It map. shows up on the tax map as one. one. It does, but that's not always correct. No, no, and I understand that. I know, uh, at least I hope the property lines aren't correct because they're, they're off. Either that or we own some of Bowles and Rice's parking. But, um, so do you want to take one until we hear from back to Yeah, I, I want to hear from Luttrell. I'm still, not unless somebody can convince me differently, I'm still um, wanting to keep some parking. And I do too, sir. For the courthouse. I, I just think it's, a, I think it's a bad move for us not to keep some of the parking. I don't think there's a benefit to it. No, that's why I think that I think that the, you know the city has made it real clear that they're um, that that downtown businesses in the business district are their parking issues are part of the city's responsibility, and I think that um, I think that in the real near future the city is going to have to put a parking structure up at some point, and. Uh, um, I think that that adds to the value of the real estate that would be sold for um, for personal use of the other two parcels that we're going to dispose of. Um, I don't know that if we're pulling, if our intent is to uh, continue to do business in that courthouse, then I see a need for parking. But if our intent is to use that for something else in the future, I don't know that I, I don't. I don't understand the argument for parking. I think. I think. Uh, I think. I guess. I agree with you. The value is tremendous on the parking. So that alone says that there's value to the parking. Um, 
and I think that in today's world, and I've seen Heather walk in in our planning department in the county, um, you know, for every square amount of square feet, you got to have so many parking spaces. Well, when downtown Martinburg was designed over a hundred some years ago, it was it was not designed for people to have cars like they do today. So if we was to calculate parking spaces according to the square footage of commercial space plus one and a half cars for every residential unit, they'd have to have multiple parking st structures to be able to do that. So I, I, see, I see your point on the, the value of the parking lot to the purchaser. Um, and, but, and, I, and then we've already we just said we're looking to move the circuit clerk, I'm, uh, the county clerk to this building so we can have under one roof. But I think if we all know, we've all accepted that we're always going to own the courthouse. So, and we're talking about being able to put, be able to, to put um, different entities. We, we recently had the Boys and Girls Club that's got a half a million dollar grant to these three people to, to be part of that grant you know, on this space. So there's a prime example of someone needing to be there. I, th I think once we figure it out, we have to evaluate the value of the, par of the parking. My, my thought, Dan, was that if somebody buys 110 and 126 as a unit, 126 would be torn down for additional parking. It may tear them both down and build Good. something on both of them. I mean, if I was going to do it, that's what I would do. I'd take all that property and create something else on it and not worry about the parking because that's the responsibility of the city but see, I would, in downtown business. District. I would turn around and build a building and put, start putting the commercial space on the third floor and use the first two floors as parking garage and rent them out. Could even be the city be interested in for a parking and, and Mr. garage, you Mr. know? Mr. President, uh, Mr. Doulier, regarding the parking, I'm an individual that's been fighting for the ADA, and I fought with the city when they put that square in, and the only ADA that is legitimate parking space is through over at the bank. And if you're in a wheelchair, you try that number getting across that that, that intersection. Yeah. And all right. so if anybody's going to use the courthouse at all, that's either in a wheelchair, on a walker, or just plain old. Well, if you're ADA, you're not going to walk the streets of Martinsburg anyway because the sidewalks are in such bad shape, you can't get around in a wheelchair. Yeah. So that's that's. But I'm just saying, for ADA, we, we should we have to meet those obligations. I think this is going to be a future topic for discussion. <clears throat> just so you know, we did winterize just this week, both 110 and 126. Um, we actually shut the water off to both buildings from the sh at the street level, and we're in the process of pulling. If you I think last summer um, we actually put some mini splits in there. We're, we're pulling those out, um, and we're going to repurpose those for 750s and all the more streams. So, 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 so let me let me say one more thing. If we're going to declare it as surplus, why not declare all of it as surplus and then uh, and then put bids out? We don't have to accept bids for the parking lot, but if you put bids out for three separate parcels at that point could determine the use for one and whether or not it was something that's going to benefit the community um, by having the use of the parking lot. For instance, like I was saying, you create a whole new structure taking up the whole space. Or, or we could say now that we don't want to sell the parking lot for what the bid comes in and retain the parking lot. You'd still have to create some type of easement between the parking lot and the courthouse because I don't think, do, it, I guess they do join by a little corner there. There's an they? alley there, sir. Yeah, there's it's a little in. corner right, right through there. there. Yes, sir. Uh, yep. Mr. Bentley just told me that he has a phone call, a conference call set up with Mr. Letcher this afternoon, so we can get some, some better information. Yeah, and I, and I think Dan's yeah. idea is a good idea, but. Yeah. Um, the only thing that he is doing in the past, 750 was on the surplus property. We pulled it back off. We put it back on. We pulled it back off. To me, that I don't, I didn't like that feel. Um, so uh, you don't think it turned out well, yeah? Oh, I do think it turned out well. I mean, uh, I'm just—it's all about the perception. Okay. I know how you are. Sometimes it's about the principle. It is. It is. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, okay, that's all I want to say. No, no, I, I think I think you had some. That was a very good comment, and I don't have a problem with declaring a surplus with if this board wants to, with the assumption if it doesn't come in. I know my my feelings is I think the courthouse needs a park, park, uh, parking. Ms. Malk has already made her statement that she feels that way. If, if we want to declare a surplus contingent upon the uh, offers we get, we can do that. But I just want the public to know that we have that option. Little gray, the maids don't. So, do you want to table that? point of view, you, you, we could save you know, some time and some, and possibly some money if if we wait till we know exactly what the parking situation is, what the layout is. Mm -hmm. Those parcels. I just don't know. I mean, in reality, you could find somebody that wants to buy the whole section and create a parking garage, well, and, I mean, and you know, and do something like that. I mean, there's there's models out there where parking garages pay for themselves and will meet a capitalization rate by doing it, not just for public entities. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there you never know what you're going to get until you until you put it out for bid. Oh, I I can see the future now. How Martin Burn needs multiple parking. Garages. Absolutely. Okay, um, so we're going to table it until hopefully Mr. Luxor gets back to us. And then, but I, I can't say that I don't disagree with Dan's theory on, on, on his default process. All right, uh, moving back to interviews of the LEPC board real quick. Um, then we have Amanda, Anita, Ron, Stephen, or Stephen, or Gary, or Jason in the audience now. Anybody? All right. Okay, then uh, we're going to go to Mr. Davis. It is, um, we still got a bit of time, so let's go to legislative priorities, Mr. Davis. Yes, sir. As the council is aware, uh, a month or so ago, we met with our local leg state legislators to talk about your legislative priorities for 2020. Uh, two weeks ago, the council um, directed me uh, <clears throat> to include on a weekly basis um, some of your top legislative priorities for <clears throat> discuss further discussion. Um, last week, we discussed, or the council discussed, the uh, property elimination of the property rollback provision of West Virginia Code, uh, and you directed me to draft correspondence. Um, for your signatures, which should be in your packet today, one to um, Senator Blair as the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, and one to Delegate Householder as the chair of the um, the House of Delegates Finance Committee. Um, we've also copied <clears throat> the the governor, um, the um, Board of Education. Um, the city of Martinsburg, so on and so forth. So that correspondence is, is in your packet. Um, this week I've included um, the 1% and I've modified it a little bit. Um, in your in your um, 2020 legislative priorities that was discussed with, at your, with our legislators, we talked about home rule. Uh, and I modified that slightly to include um, the 1% county sales tax only because it dovetails with what the County Commissioners Association of West Virginia legislative priority is for this year. So um, the 1% sales tax and or home rule uh, is listed as both uh, Berkeley County's legislative priority and the County Commissioners Association of West Virginia's legislative priority. Um, as you know, our local um, legislators have indicated that they would be hard pressed um, to support the well the one percent sales tax for the county uh, unless it was revenue neutral, which defeats the whole. Some thing. of them says that. Some of them says they never heard that. Right. So uh, it's very interesting on on uh, how they feel about that. 
the the one percent sales tax is truly a user's tax um, no different than you know franchise fee or our wine and liquor um, tax that that we collect um, it would be primarily or generated um, by um, a lot of the truck traffic a lot of the, the vehicular traffic on interstate 81 which we know is, is heavy um, and, and certainly um, if we could use that as additional revenue, it would meet um, a lot of the demands that are currently being placed on us for uh, increased services because of the growth that we're, that we're experiencing, primarily public safety demands. Yeah. Well, the good thing that I like about the 1% one cent or 1% one sales tax <coughs> is that it collects it from any user that uses it. Um, it's a fair tax, I believe. Um, I think that uh, seems like it's appropriate to put on the agenda today because of the public safety side we know that we're being faced with uh, just fire protection um, from the volunteers and it's not now we'll continue to say that's not any fault of any volunteer it's just the demand as mr roberts has, has stated it went from 300 and some calls in 1986 to 1100 some calls today that's asking a lot from our volunteers um, and um, <clears throat> so and the great thing about it as Senator Blair said before was the 1% sales tax catches everybody to come through our area that uses our services on 81 when they wreck um, and it also collects it from the people that deal in cash and it even goes as far as well I won't have to identify the ones that deal, do business in cash all the time, but we all know who they are. So um, being drug dealers and everything under the table. So um, I think it's great. I think it relieves the taxpayer of some burden of, of covering um, the, anybody who travels through the area. And I know it's a high on the county uh, commission association's priority list. And um, I, I, I think it's very fair. So, anybody else have anything to add to that? I, I personally think it needs to be, uh, if, if we're going to send a letter and, and request something along those lines, that we really need to outline all the um, all of the things that uh, additional expenses that Berkeley County pays above what the other counties throughout the state have to pay and and the, the fire service is one of them the the the, the, train, the train that we're dealing with the issue with the mark train i mean that's a that's another issue that doesn't affect the rest of the state um those type of things i think are the elevated cost for labor in itself in right. the eastern panhandle um i think we need to put a uh, emphasis on those those items to make sure they understand the problem that we have here in Berkeley County with funding. Right. Yeah. I think the other thing too that you made your statement in the past was why don't they do a pilot program for the counties just like they did the municipalities, some of them. You know, yeah. there's no reason we shouldn't be one of the first. So and I think you're right. The other the other part of that is to make sure that we prioritize, you know, if, if we're able to do it in county wide, including the the city as well, it would be um, probably ten million dollars or more, and um, I think that we need to explain, like you said, some additional costs that we pay, but also where would that money, not written in stone, but um, or I should say not written in granite, but in stone, somewhat of being able to um, say this money is going to be used for these purposes. To improve the quality of life in Berkeley County. Absolutely, I don't think there's an issue with identifying funding sources, and I think there, you know, or, or expense sources, and I think that uh, uh, that should help the cause and help the argument for them to be able to see what we plan on using the money for that we generate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want correspondence for your signature file for next week? Yeah, please. To include that. Yeah. Anybody else have anything to add on that? 
right. Let's go ahead, and, Nick. I see you walked in the room. Let's go ahead and do your interview for planning commission. We need to get Heather back to work. You have a plan for the planning commission uh, to be a member of the planning commission. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve, and uh, go from there. All right. Um, well, I'm a uh, I'm a been in Berkeley County for about 15 years now, and um, I've been involved in development in the in the region for for, for quite some time, and uh, have uh, you know I'm on some some other county boards, and thought I might be able to help. Just want to jump in with both feet, right? <laughs> I figured, uh, what the I, heck? <laughs> I, I would think of all people, you'd be a little hesitant to do that. But. Well, I I actually was in the beginning, but I have been. <laughs> I've been to some meetings and I've kind of seen how it works, and uh, I, uh, you know, recognize that there there could be a potential for a, uh, I'd, anything to anything going on around the airport. I'd have to recuse myself from, but uh, outside of that, I, mm -hmm. I can do it. The only, um, and as I, I did talk to the to the uh, chair of the uh, planning commission and explain to her there's uh, there are going to be times I'm not going to be able to make it to all the meetings I think they're every two weeks is what I recall every, yeah. and so um, just knowing that going in I, I wanted to make sure that was that was on the table I'll say Nick sets on the ambulance story and Nick's a very much a, a, a big asset to, to the ambulance story you know he conducts himself very well <laughs> and, at least during uh, the meetings huh? and uh, <laughs> And, and I know working with Nick over the years on the ambulance authority, he, he's a great, great board member. Um, and uh, and uh, if he's wanting to jump over both feet, uh, I would honor that for sure. So, Mr. Barnhart, do you have questions for Mr. Deal? Well, since he talked to the president of the planning commission, I don't know what else I have to say. But <laughs> you don't even want to cross that path. Yeah, no, I do not. But I do want to ask you, uh, there's a, a term that goes around and it's used rather flippantly, but it's called smart growth or smart planning or whatever you want to call it. Do you have any feeling about, you know, if planning commission is engaged in smart growth or assists people with smart growth or, you know, what do you, what do you feel about that? Well, I, I know enough about smart growth to be dangerous. Um, I, uh, we're, we were working with some of that when I was in uh, Jefferson, when I was working in Jefferson County. And so I have a general understanding of it. I don't, um, I think that there are some, I, as, as anything like that, I think there's some good and some bad to it. But um, I would, I would well, certainly. Yeah, I hope you, you bring that to the planning commission. Not that they're not doing it. I'm not insinuating that. But, you know, it's, it's nice for somebody to bring up issues, particularly road issues. You know, they put a big right. subdivision on a backcountry road. You know, what's that right. going to get you? You know, that's not smart growth. And, exactly. And that's one thing you've got to you, you have to work on. But, uh, I'm, well, that's, a, that's for another discussion. Another day. Yeah, well. Ms. Ball. Well, uh, this morning the comments came up that we had too many contractors on the planning yeah. commission. So... Knowing the fact that you're not a planning uh, a contractor is a step in, a, in, in order to meet that person's complaint. Uh, my thing is, when it comes to contractors, uh, I don't understand certain things in the building, and I can't imagine trying to lay some of these things out. I know you have engineers, you have your, your committees, and you have your directors of the different departments. you got to understand something about building and expansion, and just like he said, check out Hammonds Mill Road. Oh my God, this well property, they're already shutting stuff down through there and everything else. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I want to thank you for applying. And uh, the only thing I'm going to ask is you're going to have a bus service to the Planning Commission. <laughs> 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 thank you. I think, it, I think it's very important to understand. Um, I'll just say this today it's not contractors, it's not developers that write the reporting or the right. regulations. Right. It's the Planning Commission that, that adopts them. And it's our ordinance. Um, and as you know, you got to follow your own ordinance. Right. So if this body or any the planning commission doesn't like their own ordinance, they need to rewrite them, which they're working on, and change them. Um, so, um, but it's, it's, you know, that's, that's the 
that's facts. Right. And Mr. Bentley will tell you if you try to try not to approve something that has met the ordinance, you're in trouble. Well, we have, uh, I've experienced that firsthand in Jefferson County. Yeah. <laughs> in the past couple of years, and you're exactly right. If there's a, if there's an ordinance out there, it's got to be followed. And if people don't like it, then they can petition to change it. Right. Your board. Well, I'm gonna ask Nick. To, you know, I asked Nick to ask, actually apply for it. So, mm -hmm. and my uh, my request, he did, and I want to thank him for that. I've known, gosh, how long we knew each other. I, I think you're one first we've all met here. Yeah. <laughs> About 15 years. About 15 years ago, yeah. So. Uh, when uh, when I thought about him, I, I thought he'd be a good fit and a, and a good person to have on my board. So. I don't know about that third reference there. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Mr. Dale, yeah. Um, I, uh, I I knew you have a new position, is uh, and and you are tasked with uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of. Uh, I guess uh, expectations for where you're at now. Are it, this isn't going to interfere with your uh, current job. Well, that's a tough question. Yeah. Well, some of my board members can certainly be taskmasters, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that the ultimately, I think it'll complement my my new job. Uh, I think that. Uh, of knowing what's going on in the county, right? Yeah. Exactly right. I mean, it's. I think that it shouldn't. It, and. And if there is an occasion where it does interfere, then my job comes first, obviously. So. Well, I, I don't Thanks have for applying. Yeah, I don't have mm -hmm. anything, Nick. I think it's a. I think uh, Mr. Weber done a, a great thing in coming and asking you to sit on the planning commission. I think you your demeanor is, is great, you know, calm, well mannered. Right. So um, I think it's uh, and tested. Yeah, and tested time after time. <laughs> so thank you for applying. Thank you very much. All right. I just I just did have one other comment uh, because Nick does work for one of our greatest assets in the county, which is the airport. I thought it was prudent to give him the opportunity to see what we got going on in the county. Absolutely. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Um, all right, Mr. Davis, your last uh, thing on the agenda is. Do you have uh, any LEPC board members? Yeah, I know one. Just, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. I was going to say I thought <laughs> a couple of them. Any any more. other LEPC? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. glad that you rolled right in. One of you come up at a time. I'm sorry I don't recognize you. That's Ron Stevens. Good morning. Morning. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And first of all, you're Ron. I am Ron Stevens. Yes. Okay. Yes, right. sir. I'm assistant superintendent with Berkeley County Schools. All right. And um, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Why you serve on LEPC and why it's important for you to serve. Um. The relationship between Berkeley County Schools and the LEPC during the last nine years since I've, um, I believe it's been nine years, that nine years since I've served on the LEPC um, has been instrumental in, in uh, preparation for emergencies. Um, and uh, my, my role for Berkeley County Schools is to make sure that the students and the, and the staff and the facilities are, are safe very important to you I'm sure it is very important yes it's important sir. to us as well yeah yeah um, so tell us a little bit about yourself on a personal note well uh, I am a lifelong educator uh, raised by a teacher and a, and a housewife and uh, I'm married a teacher and my father-in-law is a former teacher um, so education, education is in the blood. You understand how important education is. Right? Ed education. Is I just want say? you to understand education Sorry. is important to me and my family. Right. Um, and I think passing on the uh, those values to the to the community and the students, um, the people that that serve our students is important. Um, so a little bit about me. I raised three sons. Came through Berkeley County Schools. Pleased with that. Um, happy to be a part of a of a team that that takes the safety and security of Berkeley County seriously. And I look forward to these meetings um, on behalf of the, of the people and the, the students in Berkeley County. Well, Ron, it's uh, very important for, for us to say or me to say is that uh, it's, it's people like you. Um, we've heard a lot of good things about the LAPC committee and all the wonderful work you're all doing. So 
I personally would like to say thank you uh, for being part of I appreciate of that. that. All right. Anybody else have any statement for Ron? Thanks for thanks being for involved. Yeah. And thanks appreciate for taking time out of your spin, busy schedule understanding. Yeah. Well, I think it's important. Yes, it is. It's important that you know who's, who's, uh, who's part of this as well. That's why we have you all here today. Thank you. Thank any you. other questions or anything? I think we're good. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. All right. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. Tell us a little, first of all, your name. <laughs> My name is Amanda Singh. All right, Amanda. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about yourself and why you serve on the LAPC and why, why it's important. Well, I'm currently the Deputy Director of the Eastern Panhandle Transit Authority. So a big part of being on the LAPC is the transportation part of it. So, you know, it's a big key to uh, emergency procedures and in the community. So if we had an event and we needed the transportation piece, you know, EFTA is there, you know, to, to be able to respond. And we even have big numbers on our buses that we put on the, the rooftops of our buses that are specifically for emergency procedures. So we're prepared and I'm representing that piece on the board. Well, thank you. Uh, you just moved here. I see. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jumping right in. Yes, I just bought a house on the 25th of October, so officially West Virginian. Well, so. congratulations. <laughs> it's always an Welcome honor to, to have somebody County. moving into the area that, that is picking Berkeley County to be their home. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. All right. So you're sitting on the transit, you're an employee of the Transit Authority. Yes, sir. Great. They're doing one to four as well. Yes, we are. Big plans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any questions for man? Right. I'll, I'll ask the same thing that I asked. Uh -oh. uh, um, that I asked mm -hmm. Nick. Uh, obviously, you have a uh, um, a demanding job with a lot of big projects in the future. Um, doesn't interfere. No, no, it doesn't. You know, Elaine and I are very good at delegating. Between the two of us, we're kind of a partner. We're a team. You know, we share the same office. So um, a lot of times it's, you know, if one of us has to go take care of something, the other will, you know, stand in. And then we also have other wonderful employees that are starting to step up and, and grow with the organization as we do. And we take on big things. So, so you know, you're kind of just saying to make sure that you do your job first before you get tasked with too many things. Mm -hmm. well, and board, they go kind of hand the in hand. Are watching to make sure, right? right. I'm just making sure that, that just because you know, another board, they're not going to neglect I what's understand. going on on the ones I that I'm looking at. <laughs> I understand. But, but, but they're closely related, so because yeah. we're going to be involved with it regardless. So, so you're mm -hmm. kind of saying that you're volunteering to make your job performance even better than what it was yesterday, right? right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I got it. <laughs> right. Just want to double check. I got it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So we're down to... Um, Stephen, Gary, Jason, and Anita. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Steve Ritter. I'm with Berkeley County Water Department. I'm the superintendent of operations there. Congratulations, so, by the way. Thank you. Um, so the LEPC and the water department and all the utilities are work hand in hand together in emergency and protection to serve the county. So that's why I'm on the board, or that's why I'm trying to get on the board. I've been with the LAPC for about three years. Mm -hmm. I'm going through meetings and uh, doing part of the planning, uh, the emergency response planning. One of the very important parts of the Berkeley County or any community is the water. Yes. So thank you for, for being there for three years. And well, I know Steve, and he does a slam bang job as director of operations. Yeah. I didn't know what your title was. But yeah, <laughs> superintendent of operations. Superintendent of operations. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm in charge of all the water plants. Yeah, he comes to all the meetings. Yeah. And he indicates he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> indicates? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Does that mean you're not, you don't know what he's talking about? Heck no. <laughs> um, all right. Well, anybody else? He doesn't set on, he doesn't work no, for no, you. No, no, he does. Right. He's good. He's no, good. I don't want your board. No, 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 no. I want my board. So. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Jason Hoover. Good morning, Jason. Tell uh, us a little bit about why you're on the LAPC and want to 
I guess you own it now and you want to continue to be on it? Yes. Yes, I'm currently on it. I've been on it about five years. Uh, I've worked for the city of Martinsburg for about 18 years. Mm -hmm. uh, very involved in emergency preparedness, emergency planning, uh, as well as my daily duties at the fire department. Um, I believe it's important to continue to bridge the gaps and, and build the partnerships between our county and city assets. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why I've been uh, very, very involved. Uh, emergency preparedness and emergency operations is one of those pieces that you don't want to have an issue with uh, whenever it comes to being able to work together. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's the reason why I'm, I want to be on the board uh, to uh, maintain that relationship and maintain those partnerships. Thank you, Jason, for, for devoting your time to it. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see City of Martinsburg representatives on LEP6. I think it's you know does wonders between the city and the county need for knowledge for what the other one's doing. Yeah, well, so yeah, I think it's great. Jeff both for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's great. Anybody else? I I have to agree with uh, um, Jim and and uh, one of your statements as well. I think it's great to see that uh, and I think we're seeing more of this all the time that that the county and the city um, as well as uh, as well as our, our joining cities are, are are willing to sit down to the table and come up with uh, um, common interest res uh, uh, resolutions to the problem absolutely thank you and again just we're wanting to get to know our members so yeah. and uh, thank you for taking time out to be here today you're welcome I think I see one more hand. Two, in, uh, two more hands. Anita? Yes. It's still morning. Okay. <laughs> we're not too far off schedule. Well, my name's Anita Whiteside, and I work with Hospice of the Panhandle. I'm, I've been there for four years. I'm a registered nurse. I work with a copy, and that means quality assurance and performance improvement, and also the safety officer. So I've been working with the LAPC for three years. Uh, when I came into hospice of the Panhandle, CMS mandated that uh, we develop a disaster and emergency excuse me, preparedness plan, which um, took a lot of a lot of work <laughs> and research. And um, as part of that, they wanted us to be involved in our community. And we've been doing that. We also have a representative that goes to Jefferson on the LAPC. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great uh, to have someone representing the, the ones in, in need, uh, as yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being, being part of the hospice and, and stuff. So, uh, anybody have any statements for Anita? Just thanking her for stepping up and being involved. Absolutely. Thank you. And it's all the, you know, the board and committee meet, have members that make this county such a great place all the volunteer hours so mm -hmm. thank you thank you now Gary uh, my name is Gary Cessna I'm with the American Big Cross here in Berkeley County we cover eight counties so I volunteered to more or less take charge of Berkeley County well, it's very important to have the Red Cross, Cross part of this right right somebody's house catches on fire at two o'clock in the morning I get the call yeah so, I've been a resident of uh, Berkeley County for 40 some years. Been active with different organizations, run several businesses. So we have the duty to be part of the APC to represent the Red Cross. Thank you for, for doing that, Gary. Uh, anybody have any statements for Gary? I'm just glad Gary's part of it because I've known Gary for yeah, almost 15 years and went to Rotary. Yeah. Uh, great asset for Rotary. I think the Red Cross is trying to keep it in this neighborhood because it has with Washington and whatever. And what's, what, what's the reason are we with now? <laughs> well, that's all going to be realigned <laughs> here at the first of the year. Okay. Uh, we're going to lose. We have eight counties now we cover. We're going to be losing some of those counties. But we're picking up probably two counties in Maryland and four or five counties in Virginia, up and down 81. So wow. Our territory is uh, expanding. So we need volunteers. <laughs> Brilliant. Appreciate your involvement. Thank you. Thank you. Like, 
vital to the community. If I'm thinking right, you sold real estate, right? Yes. I thought so. I thought you were no, familiar. Been selling familiar. real estate for 30 years. Yeah. Had three offices. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. well, yeah. one knows their community better than someone just that sells to people their next home. You might, you know, Mrs. Zink you know, bought a home not too long ago. You know, probably through a realtor. So right. thank you for serving and thank you for, well, on the LEPC, but thank you for also serving in the Red Cross. Okay. Right, thank keep you. up the good work. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. All right. Um, I think that does our complete the interview process. I want to thank, thank each and every one of them for taking time out of their schedule to be here today. Mr. Davis, uh, your, your topic is the reorganization of the Berkeley Fire. Yes, sir. Um, as the council is aware, uh, Glenn Eddie Okadar has been employed uh, by Berkeley County since March 1st of 2010. Uh, Eddie was hired first as our Deputy Director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management and now serves as the Director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Um, over the past almost 10 years, I've had the pleasure of working with, with Eddie and as the council uh, is aware, uh, he's been instrumental in developing Berkeley County Fire Services uh, into the first um, West Virginia combined fire service um, where the end. We were the first and maybe still be the only combined fire service where we have paid and volunteers working shoulder to shoulder uh, in our VFDs. The department um, has now grown to 18 full-time firefighters, which we uh, have strategically deployed uh, in the five volunteer VFDs uh, geographically located uh, in Berkeley County. As you know, we offer assistance to the VFDs. Uh, initially, we offered assistance to the volunteer fire departments from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and expanded that effective February 16th of 2019 so that we now have career firefighters assigned to Berkeley Heights um, volunteer fire department around the clock 24 hours a day 365 days a year last fall um, when we knew that we received the safer grant um, for the fire services staffing uh, in Baker Heights uh, we told the council then um, that we would come back to you um, with some recommendations um, once we better understood uh, how the round-the-clock deployment of firefighters um, would impact uh, Baker Heights VFD and also um, Berkeley Fire and that's why I'm bringing this back to you today it's been um, we've had um, full-time career staffing um, 24 hours a day in Baker Heights now for nine months so I thought it was appropriate that we that we have this discussion on Thursday, uh, November the 8th, which was of uh, 2018, which was almost a year to the, to the day, um, the council adopted a uh, classification and compensation schedule that uh, a committee put together, which became effective December 1st of 2018. Within that classification schedule, um, as the council's aware, we have firefighter one, two, three, and four classifications. We have uh, lieutenant rank, uh, captain classification, battalion chief, and a chief. When we implemented um, the classification and compensation schedule, um, Mr. Gokenair was placed in on the top tier of the scale as chief, but at that time, no formal change was made to his job title. So I'm here today to make two separate recommendations to the council um, that they go hand in hand and so I'll, I'll talk about both of them before uh, so that you understand why I'm recommending what I'm recommending um, during July of 2019 Eddie took a, uh, a well-deserved vacation he took two weeks together um, and as the council I'm sure is aware Prior to being employed with Berkeley County, uh, Mr. Gokenair served over 32 years as a career firefighter with the city of Martinsburg. So um, it became evident to me, although Randy and 
uh, Marty and, and everyone else did a, an exemplary job of keeping me in, in the loop, um, it became painfully aware to me um, that uh, in his absence that uh, Eddie does have extensive firefighting experience and institutional knowledge of Berkeley County that certainly we will have a hard time uh, duplicating or replicating in, in, the, in the future. Um, Eddie and I are about the same age, so I'm certainly not going to put him on the spot. But he looks so much better. Than I know he does. He's aged better than I have. Um, it's the stress of not dealing with elected officials every day. Uh, <laughs> you know, burn it, run into a build, burning building is one thing, but oh, dealing yeah, with the five of you is something else yeah, altogether. Get you, stirred up. Um, you know, accordingly, knowing that. Um, because he's worked so long in the fire service, um, there will come a, a time um, when he decides that he's going to want to retire. Um, and, and this council has been very, very good at putting in place succession planning for uh, employees that have uh, served critical roles within the county that that have a lot of institutional knowledge. And we talked about um, Maria. Um, retirement today with 41 plus years of service as our fiduciary supervisor. Um, recently the council took uh, action to allow uh, me to advertise and then ultimately hire uh, a deputy legal director because we've received notification of Mr. Bentley's intent to retire in 2020. So the second part of the discussion today is uh, I'm requesting that the council, knowing that there will come a time, which I suspect will be sooner rather than later from conversations that Eddie and I have had, um, in preparation for the day that Eddie decides that, that he's going to, to retire, um, I'm asking the council to allow me to recruit for the petition of battalion chief. Um, we I put together a, a job description and. And, and, and to be honest with you, Eddie wasn't aware uh, of this of this recommendation presentation until um, Tuesday morning. Um, we had department head staff meeting, and I asked him to stay behind uh, and wanted him to see this before I put it in the packet because I didn't want him to read about it, thinking that I was rushing him out the door. So he's seen the recommendation. I talked to him about my rationale behind the recommendation and. And, and I think he's on board with it. Um, the position uh, of battalion chief would serve as the second in command for fire services uh, under the direction of, of Eddie and would be the point of contact in matters relating to fire services in his absence. Um, Randy Lilly, who has been with us for a number of years, as you know, as our emergency manager, um, does a great job uh, certainly is a competent backup to um, to Eddie, but we, we don't want to put him in the position where he's um, spread too thin. So um, we, we've done this with community corrections. If you'll recall, we've created the, the Department of Community Corrections and we now have home confinement. We have DRC and recovery services under that umbrella. Well, this would be very similar where um, Eddie would be in charge or Eddie's position would be in charge and we would have the emergency manager and emergency services under one side and um, we would have Berkeley Fire under the, under the other side with a supervisory personnel in place, um, Randy as the emergency manager on one side and the battalion chief. Uh, on the other side, so which brings me back to my first recommendation. If you look at um, the classification schedule, you'll see that battalion chief um, is the second uh, in command on the classification schedule under chief. Um, we have never ever formally changed uh, Eddie's title. In fact, a lot of times when they talk about him in the field, they refer to him as Captain, Captain Gokanara. Well, we can't, he can't be captain because a captain reports to a battalion chief under the classification schedule. So 
my request to the council today is twofold. Um, I'm requesting that you allow us to recruit internally for now um, for the position of battalion chief based on the job classification, the job description that, that I put in your packet. Uh, and hopefully uh, Eddie and I and, and Gary Wine will also be involved. We'll find someone that we feel comfortable coming to you and recommending to be to to be that um, the person for that position. Uh, however, before we recruit for battalion chief, I'm requesting that the council formally take action to recognize and designate Eddie Gokenar as the, first, the, the actually would be the very first. Berkeley County Fire Chief. Well put. Um, I think uh, I'll start out a little bit of conversation before we, we do, do a motion um, to to do that. Uh, I think one of the things that's, that we continually talk about, and we have, like you said, um, Chief uh, Roberts from Baker Heights and his fire department realize that they were being overtasked on as a volunteer uh, on the 1100 some calls that they were getting year after year and asked for assistance uh, we also have that creek valley that has asked for assistance as well um, unfortunately we don't have a funding mechanism to to help them out and to assist them um, and i think uh, the previous president of the county commission, Mr. Stubblefield, and Eddie um, recognized that, and I'm thinking even Ron Collins maybe um, had a had a role in realizing that Berkeley County would be the first county in the state of West Virginia to, to need a combination fire department of being able to put paid staff in from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. to assist the volunteers while they were working. Um, it's been a great honor over the years. Uh, I've known Eddie or Glenn back when he worked for the city of Martinsburg um, and, um, and gotten to know him quite well in, in this position. It's, and it's been uh, my honor to be, uh, to be working along his side um, in the fire protection set, uh, part of the, of the public safety in Berkeley County. So I'm, I'm along with Mr. Davis, and I think it's an honor um, for us to take this vote today to make Andy uh, and the first fire chief of Berkeley County Fire. Chief. Mm -hmm. All right. So anybody else have any statements? All right. Well, um, need a motion uh, to uh, have uh, Eddie Gokenair or Glenn Eddie Gokenair uh, to be the chief of Berkeley County Fire. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Uh -huh. uh, anyone opposed? The motion carries. Is it the consensus of the council for us to uh, advertise internally for battalion chief? It is, I think. And also, we we intend to backfill. We have a vacant, um, safer firefighter position. We intend to, to backfill that and recruit for that. If that's, I mean, we really have to under the safer grant. Yes. So I just wanted to make you aware of that also. We need to do that because we owe it to Baker Heights because we have to fill that position. Right. Okay. All right. So without all that said, I'd like to introduce the first fire chief of Berkeley County Fire, Eddie Gokenar. Thank you. Speech? Just a little. <laughs> I can assure you that I've not gotten anywhere throughout my career or my life without help. Friends and family have been at my back all my life. This council has supported not only me, but every citizen outside these doors with their investment in public safety. 
they've understood the importance of being able to get help when they call for it. And, and you have invested a lot of time, a lot of money into doing so. There's not hardly one person that I can think of on the county council's administration that, that did not play a part in getting this set up right from the very beginning. Obviously, the leadership, Mr. Davis, Bentley, Penny, Tracy, I, and I know if I try to remember, you know, remember everybody, I'm going to fail, but, so I'm going to stop there, but almost everybody in this administration played a role in being able to accomplish this. Mr. Stubblefield, who went with me to every volunteer firehouse and explained how we could do this, and then came back and, and worked on the drafts to get the MOU squared away and was just a strong supporter of being able to assist the community. You know, I, I appreciate this. It's been a long time coming. And uh, you see, and sometimes the things don't work way you want. And I appreciate you recognizing me and having confidence in me to lead this organization and to promote me to this level. And uh, I will assure you that I will continue to work as hard as I have, you know, until my last day, and who knows when that will be. But um, I, I appreciate everything that, that you all have done. to recess for photos and uh, ask for all the friends and family to join us once we take on with Eddie with, with ourself. Uh, ask for everyone that, that wants to be part of that to come forward and, and jump in there with us. So, um, Mr. Barnard, do you have a motion to... Mr. President, I move to...
Thank you.